In today's programme, we'll be discussing Lincoln City retain list, the departure of Terry Hawkridge and remembering the Bradford Spire disaster. Join myself, Natasha Eitan Burke, as I'm joined by Daniel Kahn and Ollie Collins on the Link Sports Show. Lincoln City's retain list has been announced ahead of the 2017-18 season, with a number of players yet to agree new contracts with the club. First, let's take a look at who's under contract with the club for the upcoming season. Fan favourite Nathan Arnold, Paul Farman and Sam Habergan have agreed new contracts. Captain Luke Waterfall Let's hear from him after a historic title winning season. I knew what I was capable of in the dressing room and the management and the work that everybody's put in. Um, everybody from behind the scenes, like everybody, everybody's pulled together this year and it's, it's shown on and off the pitch. It felt a long time coming. We were nearly there for a couple of weeks and to finally get over the, get over the line uh, at home, as I say, in front of 10,000 Lincoln fans was, yeah, by, by far my best, best moment in football. No, it's been it's been one hell of a season, one hell of a ride, and uh, I'm glad it's come to an end with us obviously being crowned champion. As we've said, a number of players haven't yet agreed new contracts. Let's take a look at that list now. Forwards Adam Marriott and Jack Muldoon are weighing up their options with possibly the aim of first team football. Alan Power, Callum Howe, and keeper Richard Walton are also there. So Daniel, are there any surprises there? Um, I think the surprise there is the fact Alan Power hasn't agreed a new contract. You know, going into that retain list, we all kind of thought if Alan Power was given a new contract that he would sign it and he would stay. But first team football is obviously quite appealing maybe at his age. Um, and I also think the standout there, Ollie, as well, is the fact that that list, if Marriott and Muldoon don't agree new contracts, that leaves Lincoln very light up front. This is the thing, it leaves Matt Reid as kind of the only recognised striker in the whole of the squad at the moment, obviously with Leanne Gold going. So I can only imagine that the Cowleys are, are looking at trying to bring in some forwards, especially with Muldoon and Marriott not, and not signing contracts And as well, yet. they're not going to get kind of Johnny Margots back from Scunthorpe. I don't think they're interested in signing him. Um, and as Ollie kind of said there, Leanne Gold's gone to Mansfield. And I think that's someone that the Cowleys would have really looked at. However, though, with the money they've got from the FA Cup run, maybe they're looking at a higher standard of player now. Is there anyone you think they're particularly looking at from what clubs they're looking at? It's an interesting one because obviously with the money that's been made from the FA Cup, they don't have to look at League Two players necessarily if they don't want to. They could be looking at squads in League One as well and getting players from League One and even kind of fringe players in championship sides. Well, it, it's so difficult to even answer that question because you look at even last season, they had loan players from the Premiership, yeah. from the Championship, from League One. I think, you know, it's not really... What's really interesting with the Cowleys is it's not dependent on what division the, the players play in or their clubs play in. It's dependent on whether the players fit the Cowley system. And I think that's kind of the turning or the vital factor. Thanks, guys. Moving on, one player who won't be returning to the club is winger Terry Hawkridge, who was signed for League Two rivals Notts County. Here's why he'll be missed by City fans, an exclusive final interview with Hawkridge himself. Terry Hawkridge, a 27-year-old who scored only two goals all season before April 22nd. But would he know that on April 22nd, he, Hawkridge, would become a piece of Lincoln City history forever? After his side went 1-0 down to Macclesfield needing a win to seal the title, Hawkridge's team, his city, needed a hero. We went 1-0 down and, and you look around, not even the fans got really nervous because we always know we're going to score, especially here. And Hawkridge would be the one to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. See the keeper parried it and I wasn't sure if I could get there but then I, I see the keeper was a bit slow getting up and you know I just really, as you do, you're running to try and get on the bits and, and you know, it, yeah I, I 
was able to, well, I was able to squeeze it in the, the far corner. And with Lincoln needing a winner, Hawkridge sealed it with a goal worthy to win any title. I, I sort of seen it and then half and half, I, obviously, I thought if the keeper saves it, maybe he'll parry it to someone like Leangle or someone running in. And, and you know, to see it squeeze into the bottom corner as it did, it was, it was such a great feeling. And like I say, to see people's faces and, you know, to go on and, and win the game, it was something really special. And, you know, a day I'll never forget. And despite the winger now trading Lincoln for Nottingham, it's clear Hawkridge will always be an imp. I think when I first moved here, it was obviously everyone supported Lincoln, but not many people wore the shirt. But now, wherever you go, there's scarf shirts and, and you know, you can always look back and say, I was in the team that year that, you know, that did that. That was our own Daniel Calm with that report. So guys, how do you think Hawkridge will be missed by the City fans? I think... He's, he's a hero. He is a hero. After, after, you know, without forgetting his goals against Oldham um, or his goal against Oldham, he, he won Lincoln City the title against Macclesfield. You know, as you know, said that, he, they needed someone to step up and it was Hawkridge that day who secured the title. And I think for a lot of Lincoln fans, you've seen this kind of young player come from Scunthorpe under Chris Moises. And he was one of the players that was a link between the old regime and the Cowleys. And to see someone like him develop under the Cowleys into a vital player, especially with Harry Anderson rivaling him. Absolutely. I mean, there's been some fantastic competition kind of in the squad this year, hasn't they? But Hawkridge has almost managed to kind of cement himself in that, in that first team. When, and whenever, whenever the Cowleys have needed him, I feel like he's really stepped up this season. And those two goals against Macclesfield, well, he'll be remembered at Central Bank forever. I, mean, I, I will always remember because I had a perfect view down my camera of him scoring that second goal. So he'll, he'll be remembered forever by Lincoln City fans. This year marked the 32nd anniversary of the Bradford City Fire. The match against Lincoln City has started in celebration as Bradford received the third division trophy. I look back on this day. And we're on fire here at Valley Parade. The whole end of the stand at one side is actually in flames. Now I can see the orange of the flames. The game is actually stopped here at Valley Parade. Before that, there was a certain amount of shaking of fists and a bit of a hoo-ha at that far end. And they're running out of the ground now from that far end at this moment. It was the worst fire disaster in the history of British football. A day that was meant to be a celebration soon turned to a day of tragedy. As the main stand of Valley Parade burnt down after a dropped cigarette set the stands on fire. Fans frantically tried to get onto the pitch and away from the flames that were engulfing the entire wooden structure. The worst part of it, without a shadow of a doubt, was, was the Bradford fire. I was involved in, uh, played that day and it was certainly the worst day of my life uh, when you've got uh, 56 supporters going along to celebrate. Uh, basically we were celebrating the uh, third division championship, last game of the season. And from triumph, it went to disaster in, in the space of about 43 minutes, where, when so many families loved their loved ones. Two of the fans that lost their lives that day were Bill Stacey and Jim West, two Lincoln City fans. Bill Stacey obviously is the, uh, uh, had a complimentary ticket and I had one. But I, because Jim, his mate Jim West was obviously in his 70s, I said, oh, I don't mind standing. So Jim had the other ticket to go and sit in the old main stand at Valley Parade there. I could see looking straight across, smoke coming out. And sort of within seconds, the stand was on fire. Obviously being the other side of the ground, we was in the lucky position, could get straight up. As the Lincoln City fans made it back to the coach, they soon realised they were missing two members. We very soon found out that Jim West had unfortunately, well, dare I say, withered on the spot. Rumour, well not rumour, evidence has it, but all they found of Jim was a ring. Bill had got to Penderfields. He, he survived, for, I'll say a fortnight, you know, 10 days or so, but the burns were so bad and he unfortunately didn't make it either. So to Bill in particular, a loyal City fan, um, run the coaches on the Red Imp Association Committee, 
and Jim who'd come a big mate of his, two men of a certain age if I dare say that, you know, going about together, perished at, at Valley Parade on that day. None of us will ever forget who was there. 56 people lost their lives that day at Valley Parade. Natasha Ertenberg, Link Sport. And we remember all of those who lost their lives that day at Valley Parade here at Link Sport. The mental health of football players has often been a, a taboo subject. The Professional Footballers Association set up a 24-7 support line for footballers who are suffering with mental health problems. I looked into this often guarded subject. Everton midfielder Aaron Lennon was sectioned under the Mental Health Act earlier this month. Section 136 of the Mental Health Act gives police the power to detain individuals against their wishes if they fear the person needs mental health care. Tweets soon came flooding in supporting Aaron Lennon. Pundits, former teammates and ex-footballers. Everton tweeted, Thank you for all the kind messages for Aaron. We are supporting him through this and his family have appealed for privacy at this time. The PFA have been very vocal in supporting players with mental health problems. I've come to talk to them about what they do to help. In football, uh, we're very good at looking after physical injuries. You know, we have uh, excellent treatment uh, support systems in place from the club, from the PFA, you know, from other organisations. So physical health is, is of paramount importance and sometimes that's to the detriment of mental health and well-being. So, uh, you know, we've been really active in this area for about 14, 15 years now um, with our uh, counsel counsellors helpline, 24 hour, seven day a week helpline. We have uh, the addiction clinic, Sporting Chance. Um, we have counsellors now placed all over the country. So, uh, you know, we have very good support net mechanisms, certainly from our perspective as a PFA. Well, as we've seen with, um, you know, uh, in the case of Aaron Lennon, this last couple of weeks, you know, it doesn't matter um, the sums of money involved. Humans are all vulnerable to um, uh, to something like poor mental health. So uh, it doesn't matter for us that, that they're uh, Premier League players. We treat all members the same. And we would, the advice to each member would, would always be the same whether they're applying their trade at the very top of the tree or, or down at the bottom. If any positives have come out of the Aaron Lennon case, it's that more awareness is needed for mental health in football and further afield. Natasha Ertenberg, Link Sport. A Lincoln Walking Football Club has seen numbers more than triple in the last two years. Walking football is essentially the same as regular football, just without the running. I went along to see what it's all about. It's football, but not as you know it. Here in Lincoln, the over 50s are slowing down the pace while keeping the competitive streak alive. Many of the men have played in their youth and are coming out of retirement to rejoin the game. Its popularity has grown over the years. Well, two years ago we had five people, I think, and now we're getting sort of 20. It may be more at a session and we've had to sort of start new ones to, to sort of keep up with the demand. So yeah, they're definitely the, uh, the participation has definitely gone up. The game can get very competitive, but there are also many benefits to walking football. These include up in fitness levels and making new friends. Uh, play this one on a Monday night, which is the competitive one, and the, the people who want to be playing teams and competitions. And then I go on a Friday uh, to a UK in town, and that one's just for a bit of fun for people who just want to pay for a bit of fun, really. Keep fit. We're all of the same age group, so we tend to make friends and, and we have a bit of a laugh and perhaps the odd beer and, you know, it's, it's good fun. And that's, that's, and that's what it's all about. It's actually about enjoying yourself more than, more than the competitive side of it, although we do play competitively. And though goals may be few and far between, spirits within the team stay high. Natasha Reitenberg, Link Sport. So boys, walking football's only been around for two years. Where do you see it going in the future? 
I think it's all about getting rid of the stigma that it's just for older people to play. Because, you know, I was, I was there with you kind of filming that, and I was getting really excited myself. No, but honestly, you know, it, it's something I wanted to get involved with. Because I know it's different to say when we play Five Aside ourselves, but it's just different. And sometimes that's actually quite nice, especially when you are younger, that, you know, you don't want to get kind of down and dirty all the time. You just kind of want to play with your mates and have a bit of a kick about. Might be nice to just walk around the football field, actually, <laughs> instead of having to run and sweat and sweat out on it, yeah. But I, I definitely think it's going to be a popular sport. They just need to kind of market it properly. You know, the problem is we see these commercials on TV or advertisements that, you know, you just see older people play. So as a younger person, you think, well, actually, you know, I'm not going to touch that because that's for, you know, granddads and, you know, older dads to play. But that's not true. Now, let's take a look at the top five goals from Lincoln City season, as voted by you, the fans. At five, we, we have Sam Habergan scoring against Braintree. That's definitely a shot, I think. Come that on is now. a cross. It's a, I think it's a shot, Ollie. It's a cross. Good goal there. As a winger, I'm telling you now, it's a cross. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, you know. I, it's... At four, is Bradley Wood going on a mazy run against York? I mean, this is brilliant. The way he goes about, I mean, it's a toe poke. I don't rate the finish. I actually <laughs> think Abigam's, you know, goal beforehand is better. Is better, yeah. I like the celebration as well. The I mean, salute what to the fans. Poke makes it on the top five goals. Yeah, but look how many players he beats at it. He runs around about four players to get into the. No, that's an outside of the right foot finish, that is. That's mm. not a toe poke. At three, is Jack Muldoon's brilliant strike against Braintree. Now, that's a that's strike. A goal, yeah. That is a strike and a half. He doesn't do many, but <laughs> when he does. Oh, I got so much. Fantastic little dummy there as well. Good lad. At two is Hagerbins once again against Torquay with this free kick. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not a fan of that I mean, one. It's, it's all right. That's wonderful. Left footed as well. Who cares? And your number footed? one, as voted by you, is Nathan Arnold's incredible late winner against Gateshead. Worthy number one, I think. Absolutely. It's got to be that one. I mean, if it? Messi does that, it's like, oh, you know, 500 million hits on YouTube. You know what I mean? Just the technique there to take it down on the chest, swivel and hit it left footed as well. Wonderful. So what do you guys think about those goals? Are they the right I, choice or not? I do think with Bradley Woods, it's a toe poke. No one can convince it's an me. outside no one, of the right no, foot no, finish, no, that Ollie, is, No mate. one can yes, convince me otherwise. Um, <laughs> I do think Nathan Arnold's, you know, number one. I think, as, as I was saying before, if you saw a Ronaldo or a Messi Griezmann score that, you think, oh, God, like, he's done it again. And Nathan Arnold's done it time after time for Lincoln, and that was a fantastically taken goal. And is there anyone you think's maybe missing from that list that should have made the top five? I mean, there's some of the FA Cup goals, isn't there? I mean, Theo Robinson's lob. You think? Yeah, that was you fantastic. Think? And mm. for me... Um, Nathan Arnold again against, after, Ipswich. against Ipswich when yeah. Adam Marriott puts him through in the last minute yeah. dummies the keeper finishes you can't beat that either I, I would also say it's, it's very strange but I would actually say Leanne Gold's equaliser against Forest Green at Sinsel Bank um, there was nothing special about the finish but to me it was how he kind of bullied the defender got the ball down and then smashed it in I mean to me that's a proper goal yeah. <laughs> and that was a very good goal <laughs> And looking ahead to next season, who do you think is going to score the most goals or who's going to be a surprise for the fans? Well, at this rate, it's only Matt Reed because he's, only the, he's yeah. the only striker on their books. Thanks, Guy. And finally, Lincoln City celebrated their incredible season with an open bus parade around Lincoln. Daniel Kahn was on that bus. This time when Lincoln City would come out from Sinsel Bank, it wouldn't be onto the pitch, but onto this bus. It would be the day the team would be celebrated in the city of Lincoln and for Lincoln City supporters to show their appreciation to the players, management and more in any way they could. It's really good. I mean, we've never seen 
done anything like it before. Don't know when we'll next see anything like it. And I've just been hooked on the journey all season, really. It's been amazing. That's just awesome. It's unbelievable. Yeah, what I expected at the start of the season, but Danny Carley, Nicky Carley, it's been a big impact. Yeah, it's everything. We've been through some bad years in uh, the last six years. But yeah, we're back where we should be. It's amazing. I mean, you know, just look at it. This is, you know, you can see by the way the crowds were building up and that the, the supporters were being in there in the grounds. And this is just amazing. Fans crowded the streets, buildings and anywhere they could get a glimpse of the team's historic achievements in a season where they dominated non-league football and went on an incredible run in the FA Cup, beating opposition in Oldham, Championship Giants Brighton and Ipswich as well as Premier League outfit Burnley, which was rewarded with a trip to the Emirates to face Arsenal. To draw Arsenal was, was fantastic for the club because we knew the you know the the potential of that draw and what what it could do for our football club going forward. No one expected them to get to the quarter final of the FA Cup. No, no one's no, not, not many other National League teams have done it, have they? Uh, well, it's the first National League team in 103, the first National League team in 103 years to reach the quarter finals. So. Played some really good football on the way as well. I mean, they, they weren't they weren't outclassed against Brighton. They were the better side. The Ipswich, they, they were, I thought. First half against Arsenal, they were superb. I, I thought they, they might be able to do it in the first half, but want to be in the end. Arsenal was too strong, but fantastic season, fantastic achievement. This was more than a celebration. This was a city reconnecting with its football team. You know, we were all there that day. I mean, I'd say personally my favourite part was just seeing the pure joy on all those fans' faces. What would you guys say was your favourite part of the day? Oh, it's fantastic. Just, the, the, I think for me, the sheer amount of people that actually showed out for it. Mm. I mean, we were hearing kind of police estimates at 35,000. I mean, there probably wasn't that many there. ambitious, but, I Yeah, think. but to kind of cheer on the whole team. So for me, you no, know, it was absolutely fantastic day. My favourite part was being on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I was on the second bus and what was actually fantastic to see is, as well as, I think what everyone's forgetting here is, although it's, it was for the players, for the management, to be with their families, you also had people there, you know, on the, the other two buses, the chefs, you know, the ticket uh, ladies and men, you know, you had other people that are the backbone. Dinner ladies in as well. Like dinner yeah, ladies exactly. And, and like you, you had the backbone of the club as well, who were also getting all that kind of applause and celebration. I think that was really important as well. It was great as well to see the fans that had been there since, you know, the relegation and also the fans that had come back in the last year or so because you think the beginning of the season we weren't seeing that many people win Cincel Bank and now, like the people queuing this week for season tickets, would we have seen that last year? Probably not. Well, I think this season um, under Danny and Nicky Cowley, I think it's all, it's been all about reconnecting the club with the fans. I think the amount of work them and the players have done within the community, I mean, and the FA Cup run of course helps, but it's all been really fantastic in terms of reconnecting and really building that bond up again. Absolutely, I mean, it's, it's been fantastic that what they've done in just a single season here and who knows what they could do in four or five.